Today's case happened in 2003 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The couple, Liana Frindebach, 16 years old, and Felipe Café, 19 years old, decided to go camping. They were students, met at school, and had been together for about two months. Even with the whole weekend planned for the camp, Liana hadn't told her father, lawyer Ari Frindenbach, that she would go camping with her boyfriend because she was afraid of him forbidding her since they were at the beginning of the relationship. So, she said she would spend the weekend on a bus tour to Ilha Bela with other young people from the Paulista Israelite congregation, which is 200 kilometers from the capital of São Paulo. Felipe also didn't tell his mother he would go camping with his girlfriend. He said the correct place, but informed he was going with some friends. The place they went to was in Buguassu, 36 kilometers from the capital. On October 31st, 2003, a Friday, the couple headed for the planned weekend. During the night, they stayed together until they took the bus at 5 a.m. on the bus terminal station with destination to Imbuguasu. Liana's dad called her in the morning just to see if everything was okay and on the phone, Liana said everything was fine with the trip. Already in the city, while walking towards the village of Santa Rita, where they would later camp, they started to attract the attention of the other inhabitants because they clearly didn't dress as simple as the others, as well as carrying some expensive things with them. The couple arrived at the site, pitched the tent, and quietly enjoyed the first day. During the night, the couple's nightmare began. Wake up, wake up! Give me everything you have! A boy cut the tent and announced the assault. Beside him, another man was pointing a gun. Leon and Felipe did not have enough money or valuable items to make those men happy, and so the criminals decided to kidnap the couple. These men were Roberto Aparecido Alves Cardoso, a 16 years old teenager, better known by the name of Champinha. He had a learning disability, left school in the fourth grade of elementary school, worked as a bricklayer assistant, earning 150 reais a month, something around $50, which at the time was a little more than half of a minimum wage salary in Brazil. Champinha liked to roam the bush, hunt animals, drink, smoke, and was well known in the city for causing trouble. The other was Paulo César da Silva Max, a random man who weeks earlier, walking around the region, had stopped at a small repair shop asking for a job and ended up painting a refrigerator. The robbery was planned because Champinha and Paulo had seen the couple walking around a small town and as they carried field materials, they deduced that the couple were going to camp. It took the criminals less than a day to think about the robbery, and it was not difficult to find them and commit the crime. So, taking Liana and Felipe through the forest for more than two kilometers, with their faces covered with towels, they arrived at a filthy house where they would keep the couple captive. This house belonged to Antonio Caetano, a bricklayer of over 50 years old, who was known to the criminals, but Antonio wasn't there. Not yet. The captivity was a highly unhealthy and unhygienic place. The criminal do separated the couple into different rooms as soon as they got there. Fearing what the criminals may do, Liana tried to do something. What do you want? Money? My family can get it for you! But the man had other plans. On the first day of the kidnapping, on the 1st of November, Liana was attacked several times while her boyfriend remained trapped in the other room, unable to do anything, but he could hear everything. Let me go. Let me go. Don't do that. 
The next morning, they decided to go out with a couple on a forest trial. Paulo was holding Philippe, walking in front of Champignon, who was holding Liana. The two had decided that Philippe would be of no use. Paulo put Philippe on his knees and shot him in the back of the head. After that, Paulo went to São Paulo and left Liana in the power of Champinha. Upon returning to captivity, Liana was attacked again. She was no longer expressing emotions. She was in complete shock. On Sunday night, the owner of the house arrived. Antonio da Silva Caetano was accompanied by another man, Aguinaldo Pires. The two had no idea what was going on, but when they arrived, Champinha introduced Liana as his girlfriend. This one is my girlfriend, but you know what? You can do whatever you want with her. That night, Liana was assaulted about five times. In São Paulo, still on Sunday night, Liana's father, lawyer Ari Frendebach, called her cell phone. The connection didn't complete and Ari believed that, due to the fact that Liana said she was in Ilha Bela, a remote place where mobile connections don't work very well, the phone was out of service. He then decided to wait for the bus to arrive at the congregation's bus stop. However, no buses arrived. Starting to get very worried about the situation, Ari called a friend of Liana's. Listen, where's Liana? Mr. Friedenbach, I think she went out with the church staff. She already arrived? Girl, listen, Liana disappeared. She disappeared? Tell me what's going on. Mr. Friedenbach, Liana, she... I'm sorry, she went what? As it was already late, Ari thought they had missed the last scheduled bus and decided to drive to Embuguasu himself to meet the couple. On this trip, Ari asked one of his friends to go with him. Arriving there, they searched for the couple in the city until 3 a.m. on Monday, until they decided to return to Sao Paulo and register a policy report of the couple's disappearance. Because Ari was a man with a lot of connections, he could manage at that moment, called the COI, Centro de Operações Especiais da Polícia Militar, or Special Operations Command of Military Police. During Monday, Champinha decided to go fishing and took Liana with him. By coincidence, Champinha's brother met them, but very scared, Liana didn't express herself or try to ask for help. Champinha, where have you been? Who is that girl? My girlfriend, what do you want? Mom is worried. She hasn't been able to talk to you for a long time. Tell her I'm fine. It's okay. Between the dawn of Monday, November 3rd, until Wednesday, 5th, the Koi managed to find a couple's stand and belongings, including Liana's cell phone. This made Ari very worried. He managed to mobilize the media, including the national press. They even sent a helicopter to throw flyers with the couple's photo over the seat of Embuguasu. On November 4th, Tuesday, another person ends up being involved in the kidnapping, Antonio Matias de Barros. He showed up to visit Antonio Caetano, but he just found Champinha and Liana. Instead of getting out and calling for help, he decided to join the attack sections. With all this movement towards the couple's search, on November 5th, Wednesday, Champinha became aware of this and told Liana that she would be released. On the way through the undergrowth, Champinha, with a knife, stabbed her several times, thus taking her life. He only left the place when he was sure Liana was dead. As Champinho was well known in the city for being involved in many problems, the police decided to look for him just to question him. Thus, on November 10th, Champinho was found 
and taken to the police station. There, he confessed to the crime without any show of remorse or regret, and also said the names of all those involved. He told everything in detail and even took them to the crime scenes where were Liana and Felipe. On November 14, 2003, Paulo César, Antônio Caetano, Antônio Matias e Agnaldo Pires were arrested. At the trial, they received the following sentence. Antônio Matias received six years for private imprisonment and concealment of a murder weapon. He has already served his sentence and now walks free. Agnaldo Pires, 47 years for physical abuse. Paulo César, responsible for the death of Felipe, got 110 years for qualified murder, physical abuse, kidnapping, and private imprisonment. Antonio Caetano da Silva got 124 years for the many physical abuse he committed against Liana. Champinha, being under 18 years old at the time, was sent to trial by the Child and Youth Court and not to the jury tribunal. According to Act 121 of the Brazilian Federal Constitution, a minor, someone under the age of 18, can not be in prison for a term longer than three years. Thus, Champinha was apprehended but only admitted to the prison for young offenders for a three-year term. After the fulfillment of this measure, there being no possibility of being punished more than once for the same crime act, the solution that the public prosecutor found so that Champignon would not leave the sphere of the state surveillance was to ask for civil interdiction. The request was accepted as it was accompanied by a medical report confirming that Champignon is unable to live socially. Thus, until today, almost 20 years after, Champignon remains at the Experimental Health Foundation. This case opened a new analysis for the re-evaluation of this law. Ari Frendebach, who is now a counselor, became part of groups that advocated for the reduction of the age of criminal responsibility. However, analyzing the situation better, he now argues that the reduction of the age of majority to 16 years would only cause criminals to start attracting teenagers when they are younger. Today, Ari works intensively in defense of the tightening of the punishments of minors who commit heinous crimes. <laughs>